Welcome, welcome. You are listening to The Whistle Way Podcast. My name is Kyle Whistle, your host with Whistle Realty Group, joined as always by Mr. Jason Hall with Team Home Loans. And Jason, this is going to be an interesting one because one of the people that I look up to the most oh, when you, it comes that. to marketing oh, that's is not a gentleman named Gary Vaynerchuk. And Gary Vaynerchuk is an amazing speaker, runs a huge media company, does a ton of public speaking, makes a boatload of cash when he does uh, speaking events. Um, had the opportunity to have dinner with Gary not too long ago. Um, actually offered to be a booking agent for me for speaking, which is kind of cool. Um, so cool. I've always really looked up to Gary. But Gary came out with some comments this past week that have really polarized the real estate industry. And Gary came out and said he no longer believes that home ownership is part of the American dream. Mm. And so here's what's very interesting is Gary, just weeks prior, hosted an event called Agent 2021, which is catered toward primarily real estate agents. So, But then weeks later comes out and says he no longer believes home, home ownership is part of the American dream. And, and what does he mean by that? Have you found out more information? He basically said he doesn't believe it's the best usage of capital. And he regrets owning the home that he currently lives in, and he's never going to buy another home as long as he lives. Can I bet on that? I, I would bet he. I bet that. I bet he that changes. Now he did buy a home in New York City, and some people have done a little research, and it appears he may have paid a little much for it, and it's not worth as much as what he paid for mm. it. So, you know, some of the different thoughts you get on burned. On you know? why he's thinking that one, maybe he overpaid for his particular home, and the New York real estate market had a little correction over the last couple of years, partially because things were selling for so much money. Then they built a right. massive so many developers amount of show stuff. Up. Right. And if you guys watch Million Dollar Listing, you know they talk about all these developments that are going up. And I think they overbuilt New York City, so there was a little bit of a correction. It seems to be back on track now, but I think that might be part of his thinking. The other part of his thinking, and, and I think that it comes from what he does, which a big thing is venture capital. And so in venture capital, you need money that you invest into these companies. These companies grow, and you have the opportunity to make massive amounts of money. So I believe part of his argument is that his money is better off being used for more venture capital deals as opposed to being used for home ownership. But it's, we're only talking about a down payment. You've talked about this on many shows in the past about leveraging. So let's say the market just goes up 5% a year and you buy a $500,000 home. That's $25,000 a year increase. If we just take simple 5% math, you know, so in four years, that's a hundred grand. Now, most of our clients probably only put down maybe 5%. So they're putting down 25 grand in four years. They've taken that 25 grand and they've got a hundred thousand dollar return. I mean, that's a four hundred percent return. How's that not the American dream? Still, I know the stats that have come out recently show the majority of wealth in the United States is because of home ownership. And those who own homes, and those like you who own multiple homes, more than one, right? I mean, you know, full so somebody that started at nineteen in this business, you've I'm sure got a different, you know, outlook on that. But Somebody that got burned, if that's his situation, like I've seen a lot of people married for many years, they go through a horrible divorce, and of course they come out saying, I'm never going to get married again, right? And I, I think, you know, because they, they were burned, they lost a lot of money, um, a lot of sleep, emotions, you know, kids were involved, and, you know, so you can have, you know, you can understand why people, you know, go that. But somebody like Gary V, who's so now well-known, not only in the real estate, but even listen to a poker podcast on our flight back this guy listens to Gary V because he wants to learn more of the psyche and what people think and that's what Gary V is so good at so it's be kind of interesting yeah I think Gary has assured himself of significantly less real estate speaking <laughs> events moving forward um, I unless think, he has a spin on it I think some people may put him on to debate him Although um, a guy I look up to, Steve Harney, who runs Keeping Current Matters, already came out and challenged him to a debate, which uh, Gary deferred and, and said he's not going to waste time debating anybody. So I think he's definitely guaranteed himself less speaking engagements, um, especially when it comes to real estate. And you know, I think one of the stats that, that Gary might be missing here is the average homeowner's net worth is just shy of $200,000. Want to take a guess at what the average renter's net worth is? 
minus ten thousand dollars. Fifty four hundred bucks. Close. So one hundred and ninety five thousand four hundred. Difference versus between a homeowner renter. Fifty four hundred. Thirty six times more. So what's this guy gonna rent? Something he's paying ten, twenty grand a month? I mean, I've seen people do that. Even on these shows, they don't sell the listings sometimes because somebody can't get their money out of China, but they rent these things for thirty, forty grand a month. Yeah. Is that what he plans on doing? Right. I mean, now, what's the what's the angle? Now, I will say that there are certain scenarios, certain locations where renting might make more sense than buying. Like one specific example here in San Diego, the rent to price ratio in something like Coronado is totally out of whack. Right. You can go rent something in Coronado for six grand a month. Where if you bought it, it would be double that. Right, it'd be like easily. 10 to 15 grand a month. Very easily. And Coronado is kind of unique in that regard. But come out to East County where we do a lot of business, you can actually own a home for the same, if not less, than what you could rent that same home for. Like mm-hmm. in Santee, for example, uh, we have a listing right now that's on the market for 490 Okay. And that same home... Is renting rents for, for $2,800. And that's about what your mortgage payment is with a small down payment. Right. Small down. And that's the big thing, too. Right. It's small. small. Uh, and with, if you're a VA, you could probably actually no money, no money down. You could buy, buy this particular cheaper. condo yeah, for be. no money down. And the mortgage payment is going to be almost the same as the rent payment. And then after you factor in some of the tax benefits, it's probably going to be lower. Right. So how the, does that make well, sense? Well, here's the other factor, and we've talked about this on previous shows that people don't think about. Here's a tip for agents and lenders that are listening right now. Part of your mortgage payment is a principal reduction. A lot of the financial people, like Harney, will tell you that is actually a savings account. Some it's people a call it forced, a forced savings account. Forced yeah. savings account. So if you're paying like $600 a month, that's $7,200 a year. That is forced. That's assuming you're, even if your value never goes up, stays the same. You will get that money back when you sell the house because you owe less on the loan. Right. Right. Where renters, I mean, it's like an interest only loan. It's going nowhere. Right. Right. And it's almost like a negam loan as a renter because you're losing out on the appreciation and the landlord, like you in many cases, because I know you own multiple units. You love having renters pay your mortgage payment. I mean, there is a benefit to Gary's advice is that. Now he can just help drive my rentals up and drive the price up for rentals. Tell me you got a place in San Diego. You yeah, rent. Gary. I mean, if you love renting, bro, I got something for you. We'll put you in Logan Heights in one of my uh, gems down there. I but, mean, if you, if you want to rent stuff, bro, I got you covered. But it is interesting that a guy that gets speaks, I mean, he makes millions of dollars speaking across the nation and to a lot of agents. And he literally says this. And now most agents won't actually, you know, call him anymore. So you're a little distracted. You're having fun. Somebody's bouncing a balloon here. We're getting ready to catch them on video and do some cameras. Like, you know, here's what they do at the radio show, right? Like, you know, young gal, she looks like she's under 30, having fun, like she's sixing it. So a couple other points that, you know, that I think Gary's missing. One, I think he's really missing the boat when you look at the average net worth of a homeowner versus a renter. I think he's also thinking specifically about New York City, which I think has some of that skew like Coronado does, where to go buy something is just absurdly expensive, where you can rent it for significantly less. And then I think he's looking about, well, I'm a venture capitalist and I can deploy that capital for other ventures. And then the last part that I think that he's really missing is not understanding what the down payment requirements are. Right now, maybe in in New York City, where you're buying stuff for two, three, four million dollars, you need a lot more down. A VA loan, an yeah. FHA loan, does not exist. <laughs> right, right. You can't go get a VA loan for three million dollars. That's just not right. a possibility. But here in San Diego, a VA loan, Veterans Administration for those who've served, they can go buy a home with zero money down. So now they're deploying no capital right. to go buy these. You know what homes. happens though, and, and we've seen Gary speak. He tells people, do not make emotional decisions. And yet it appears, based on his advice right now, Kyle, he's making an emotional decision based on what happened to him. I mean, he's done very well in his life. Everything he's touched turned to gold. The one thing that didn't was a bad purchase in New York. And, oh, that means, you know, the American dream is dead and nobody should be buying real estate. It's truly an emotion. He, sh- he should take his own advice. If he just listened to himself two years ago, um, you have to step back and look. And that's what's great about hiring a property manager to take care of your properties. And that's what's great about hiring an agent and having a lender to help you through the whole process, right? It's huge to have somebody that's not emotionally tied like you are. Because as a buyer and a seller, you're emotionally tied. And that's kind of what I think Gary's seeing right now, is this whole emotional stuff. And what else are we going to catch on video, man? 
It's crazy. It's, yeah. it's nice being on the radio. We get to do the podcast here in the radio uh, studios right after our radio show. And it's kind of cool to see what happens because we're all got these uh, glass well, walls. That's the beauty of 2019 is that we get to have Facebook Live. We get to have YouTube. We get to have podcasts. We get to have airwaves. I mean, we literally get to be everywhere these days. So, Gary, I love you, bro. And I respect you. But I think you... I don't know if I want to call it uneducated, but I think you you it's have, an emotional decision. You have made a statement that is going to cost you a lot of money, and I think you made a statement that is very flawed, is very inaccurate, and I think it's very um, it's very specific to your situation. It's not specific to the world or the, yeah, you know, real, real estate as a whole. Investments are you know are local, and so maybe a New York City his advice might make some sense. It could. But here in San Diego, California, in most of San Diego, again, there are some coastal markets that the numbers are out of whack, but in most of San Diego, the cost to own versus rent is very, very similar. In some areas, it might be a little bit higher to own versus rent. In some areas, it might be a little bit lower to own versus rent. But for the most part, they're relatively close based on today's prices, based on today's interest rates. And so, Gary, I think you missed the mark, my friend. I think you're encouraging people to be the $5,400 net worth people <laughs> as opposed to the $195,000 net worth people. 36 Didn't... times higher for those that own a home. Yeah. So, Gary, my friend, you missed the boat. Yeah. And didn't Pops tell us, invest in what you know? Yes. Invest in what you know, Gary. If you don't know high-end real estate, don't invest in there. Invest in what you know. And what I know is San Diego, definitely in that first-time home buyer to, to mid-market, is a great, great long-term investment, has been my whole 30-year career. I love it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Whistle Way podcast. If you want to keep the conversation going, join our Facebook group, The Whistle Way. We have a shortcut for you to make it nice and easy. It's thewhistleway.com. Whistle is W-H-I-S-S-E-L. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you next time.